Hello everybody, welcome back to another Britannia tutorial. And in today's tutorial, today's tutorial is a little bit different because we are going to be having a look at a flower again. I got a good response from the last one we did like this. We kind of figure out a few things about the flower, go over some things you might not know or you might want to know or things you didn't even think about knowing. And in today's episode, we're going to be having a look at the Hopper Hock. Now, this is one of my most favorite flowers. In fact, it's probably my most used flower and for good reason. It'll pick up every item on the ground in its range and place it into nearby inventories. It's real, well, adjacent inventories. It's really, really easy to use. But there are a few weird things and a few things you might not have thought about when using that. So let's get to it. Now, for starters, you can see when I'm hovering over this hopper hock, you can see how far its range is. That's because I'm wearing the Manasea monocle over there. And that gives me the ability to see the range in all the four cardinal directions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate just how this thing works. So we've got a hopper hock next to a chest filled with a whole bunch of stuff. You can see as soon as I throw a day bloom down, a little bit of an animation happens and the day bloom gets stored in the chest. You can also see, for instance, when we throw a stack down like that, it'll pick up the whole stack as well, all in the chest. And it can also be switched on and switched off with a redstone signal. So because this recipe's got a redstone root in it, it will allow it to be switched on and switched off like that. So that redstone block there is powering it. As soon as we break the redstone block, it gets picked up straight away. So that's kind of the basic, basic way of using a hopper hock. We're going to go over a few things. You can see here, we've, we've got a few things sort of set up. But what we'll quickly go through is just how you can kind of use very, very easy things about this. Now, the hopper hock will always pick up items within that range there. It also goes in the same range, well, the same distance uh, horizontally as it does vertically. So we'll, we'll demonstrate that now. But currently, what we are going to do is we're going to just demonstrate a few weird things about it. So placing an item frame on a chest will make that chest the first prioritized chest for items. So you can see when I drop, for instance, a nightshade, because I've put an item frame on that chest, the nightshade will go into that chest. Now, if I took that away, and we dropped a nightshade. For reasons that we're going to have a look at a bit later, nightshade will go into that chest. So that's kind of the way these item frames work. And this is something that's a little bit interesting to me. I didn't actually know that until today. Also, with these item frames, you can designate whether you wanted to only pick up one type of item. So we know that that should pick up the nightshades now because it had that on the front there. So you can see when we put that there, nightshade should go in that chest. And now when we put day blooms down, Day blooms, however, will not get picked up in that chest. You can see, just a nightshade. There's a day bloom. Now, the reason for that is when we have a look here, you can see this hopper hock says pick up only items in frames. So that one is only going to pick up items in frames there. We can also switch over to the function mode. So you can see we've got rid of that little green leaf on our Wand of the Forest. And we can then shift, yeah, shift right click. We can go pick up only items in not in frames. So that'll pick up items that aren't in frames. So for instance, we dropped a day bloom down there. We should expect it to go into here. Like that. Very simple. So that's kind of like a whitelist blacklist system. And then we can also change it to pick up any item. So it should pick up all these items that we dropped down here. For instance, they should all go into there now. Very simple. Very easy. And that's kind of the basics of the hopper hock. Now we'll go over a few different things for range. So we know that it's got the range like that. And in fact, that is six blocks in all horizontal directions. Also, it's six blocks in vertical directions. So you can see over here, that one over there is one, two, three, four, five. Check when we put on this one, six, and it will not get picked up. And that's because it's including that block there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry. That's, that's what's happening there. You can also see this is definitely still in range. Put one there. And that still gets picked up. So that's the vertical range of it. The horizontal range works exactly the same. We'll go down six blocks and you can see there that will not get picked up. However, there it gets picked up. So <laughs> that's basically the vertical horizontal range of this thing. So it picks up in a square at all times. You can also change up how far it can pick up. So we've got a petite version of this. So you can see that's a floating petite hopper hock. And that's only got one block around it. So anything placed outside of that block will not get picked up. Around here, you've also got another way of extending the range. And that's using a mana pool with mana in it. 
to give the hopper hawk a bit of bit of mana like that. So you can see that gives it an extra one block range on the petite hopper hawk. So that's petite, that's petite. Then you've got a normal hopper hawk, which now gives you six blocks. So it's gone one, two, six, all the way out there. And you can see that one's got no mana in it. And as soon as you give that one mana, you get a whopping 10 blocks in all directions. And these values apply for that little rule over there where it's always a square. These ones will also go up 10 blocks and down 10 blocks and the same for both of those. And now another little test we want to do is try and see whether or not this prioritizes where things are picked up and whether or not they'll go in first. So we'll press this button, which makes all of these drop out. Now don't worry about it. We're kind of just trying to see whether or not things do get prioritized. And you can see all of those got picked up at the exact same time for that one. And yet again, you can see. So this will always pick up items regardless of where it is on the ground. So that, that's kind of a, an interesting little thing I wanted to test out there myself. Now, the next sort of thing I want to do is try and see whether or not we can see whether or not this is prioritized in terms of direction. So you can see we've just put a hopper hock down there. We'll drop a nightshade and see which chest is the priority chest. Now, I already know it's the one to the east. <laughs> Every time, the one to the east is your priority chest. Another thing we can do, for instance, is we can place one of these down and place one of those down drop one of these and see which one picks up first now. Now, because I placed this one in the east, which isn't actually affecting this right now, but this one was the one I placed first. And you can see that one picked up one first. Now, when we break that away, this one should pick up. Just like that. Now, when we put the hopper hop, hopper hop back and we drop one, this one will get picked up. Now, what is happening there? Oh, wait, sorry, I need to break that one. <laughs> that one was actually picking up, sorry. So yeah, the, the one that we put down first will always have priority to pick up. So if we put that one down first, then that one, then that one, then that one, we could assume that that one is going to pick up the first item. Like that, we'll break it. Then we put down one of those. That one should pick up that item there. And the same will occur for all of these. So priority comes with which one puts down gets put down first. Now, here is the test we just did there with the side and side so you can see like that and like that and basically i just wanted to do this just as another test to see whether or not our <laughs> west east is properly working and you can see 100 that is what is happening there now if we go down here i just wanted to test out which chest gets priority on the hopper hock so you can see there's a hopper hock in the middle there and we want to see what is going to be the first priority chest to pick up the items so we know it's going to be east because that was just the test again. We'll wait around. There's the east. And we can test this out by saying which one's going to get it next. So we drop it down there. We know the east is out of it now. And it's, surprise, surprise, the west chest. And we can go around. We can see which one goes next. So that one there's the north. That one there is the south. So it goes south. And any bets on what the next one will be? In fact, I don't, I don't know which one these are going to be. But surprise, it's north. Now the top and bottom, I am very, very unaware of which one will go. I'm going to guess the bottom, no, the top. Okay, well I guess we know when when that one's going to be going. Uh, now this one over here was just to kind of show you that these ones will take priority with item frames. And I've already kind of shown you that in the beginning, but that's just to prove it again. That one we know that it should be the east one picking up first, because remember I did mention something about that a bit earlier? Well, we can see that it's going to be the west one because of that item frame. Now, one of the few things at the end here is the modulating delay section of the, the Lexica Batania. Now, the hopper hocks do get affected by that modulating delay. Now, what is happening is this is a normal hopper hock, and we'll drop a nightshade on that. You can see that that hopper hock will pick up the nightshade there because that one does not have any delay on it. Using a Borel seed, so one of these seeds, you can place it on a hopper hock, and that will mean that that one will always pick up a bit later than that one. So it takes a few extra ticks delay before it'll pick up an item. So for instance, we got rid of that, and then we put one back. So we know that these ones were here first, because we've already tested it out there. We know that's the way these things work. That one will still take priority over these two. See, there we go. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. And also, deleting that one, deleting that one will still allow these to pick up just takes a lot longer time. So we can do that, do that, and we can still test it out. So that one will still take priority 
over this mycelium seed, which is the infestation spore. Just like that. So I wanted to quickly show you a little hint. If you guys wanted to get a few different things into a particular inventory, for instance, a chest. So say you've got full up on your item frame. So you can place one on each of these sides here. So you can go like one there, one there, uh, one there, and one there. So you can see we've got four on this chest. And say, for instance, we want to put another one. You can put a hopper just like that. So we just put a hopper like that. And we can get some item frames there. But that one will require two hopper hocks. And also another quick thing I wanted to show you is just shift right clicking means you can kind of get a, <laughs> a hopper hock to share a block with an item frame. Now that's something that's really, really useful. Um, but if you wanted to just continue going a bit bigger, you can do it like that, placing some hoppers and you can get them all into one inventory. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much all I can show you for today, guys. I think that's pretty much everything there is to know about a hopper hock. Now, let me know if there's any topics you guys wanted to see in this or anything you didn't know about down in the comment section. But thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next time.